Neurospora are filamentous fungi, which are widely used in laboratories to study eukaryotic cells. These fungi grow as long tubular cells, which occasionally form branches. Uh, essentially, all the growth occurs at the tip of the cell, and so this is an important part of the, the whole growth process. It has to mobilize all of its resources and structures and move them up to the growing tip. In this video, we're using red and green fluorescent proteins to mark specific organelles so we can look at their structure and their distribution in these cells. Uh, we start with nuclei, which are shown in this video clip. Uh, as is typical in filamentous fungi, there are multiple nuclei in a single cellular compartment. There can be 50 nuclei or more. They're all moving towards the growing tip, which is down at the bottom of, this, of the picture, uh, although you find an occasional one that moves backwards. We, we don't really understand what causes this backward movement, but most of them are moving on towards the tip. Proteins that localize to the endoplasmic reticulum are also seen in the nuclear envelope. In fact, we know that the nuclear envelope is really just a specialized region of the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, the ER is also made of many other small membrane fragments, although in Neurospora, the endoplasmic reticulum doesn't seem to be as highly structured as it is in some other organisms. At the tip, the membrane fragments are more abundant, more abundant, in fact, than the nuclear envelopes themselves. The nuclei at the tip are also quite more variable in size, and you see a lot of small nuclei that you don't see back in the older hyphae. In Golgi, proteins are modified and packaged. Golgi in Neurospora are small, rather irregular vesicles. They're most abundant near the hyphal tip. Interestingly, different Golgi proteins appear in different non-overlapping compartments. And the real structure of Golgi and filamentous fungi is poorly understood. Mitochondria produce energy for the cells in the form of ATP. They're probably the most abundant of the organelles. In fact, unlike most of the other organelles, we see lots of mitochondria, even in the most apical parts of the hypha, right up at the hypal tip. Mitochondria look like thin little worms, and they're usually aligned with their long axis parallel to the long axis of the hypha. As we move to older parts of the hypha, we still see many mitochondria, but as we get back into the bigger, older parts, we see that the shape changes. They become much shorter. We don't know how this shape difference comes about. We tend to think of vacuoles as large spherical organelles. And in fact, big round vacuoles are common in Neurospora, especially in older hyphal compartments. However, the vacuolar compartment is more complicated in its structure. If we look at the tip, we see few vacuoles, just in the form of a few small vesicles. However, 50 to 100 microns behind the tip, the vacuolar proteins that we're looking at appear in a network of tubules. And these tubules are quite dynamic, uh, with a whole network of tubules moving towards the growing tip. Occasionally, we'll see a small round vacuole embedded within this overall tubular network. A few of the proteins that we looked at, like the vacuolar ATPase, are especially prominent in spherical organelles. They're about three microns in diameter. Interestingly, we see these only near the hyphal tip. The only place they appear is just at the leading edge of the tubular vacuolar compartment. Only a subset of vacuolar proteins are seen in this organelle. For example, the vacuolar ATPase and the calcium transport protein are very abundant, but the vacuolar snare proteins are not observed here. The function of this organelle is still unknown. There's still much to be learned about the structure and distribution of organelles. Neurospora seems to be a great organism to use to study these questions. The strains used in this video are available to all from the Fungal Genetics Stock Center.